So finally, a day is here where all of you Phoenix 7 and Epix owners finally get all the new features of the Garmin 4100 955 that were promised about a month ago when the 955 came out. This includes things like training readiness and HRV status and running power natively if you have a Garmin accessory and a slew of other features. In total, the Epix and the Phoenix 7 watches are getting almost 20 new features today, but more interestingly, there are some features on the list that Garmin has never talked about before and are totally brand new to the Epix and the Phoenix 7 and not even seen yet on the 4955. Now, before we get to all that goodness, one super duper important thing to note is that this is on Garmin's public beta or technically their public alpha builds, meaning this is the software that you have to download using the nifty little cable to your nifty little computer onto the watches. It's not even yet on what Garmin calls the beta side, which means that it happens wirelessly from above on the Wi-Fi and stuff like that. Instead, you do have to use a cable to put it on your watch. I've got an entire video on how to do that up in the corner there about Garmin's new beta program, so check that out if you haven't. The point being that this will not automatically come to your watch until you do that whole step. Anyways, we're just gonna run super quick through the list, but most importantly, I'm gonna give you a bunch of tips and tricks along the way from my experience with using these features that hopefully kind of get you like kickstarted off and running. So the first item is brand new to all Garmin watches, which is adding sat IQ support. Uh, so this is pretty cool. If you go into the menus here on this and go all the way down to your satellite options, so down to system and then down to satellites, there's a new option called auto select. The idea behind this is to be able to take kind of the best of multiband and dual frequency GPS, which is super duper accurate, but burns battery like a blowtorch and combine it with the regular modes called all systems right there. So what this does behind the scenes is it basically dynamically switches between these two modes, the high battery burning, but super accurate mode and the more normal all systems mode that's again, basically double your battery life. And in particular, it's looking at the GPS signal quality or rather the GNSS signal quality of that and then switching and kicking up to the dual frequency when it needs to or multiband when it needs to and then bringing it back down to the regular side. Now Garmin's saying and they're testing internally and whatnot that they see about 15% of the time it'll kick up into the multiband configuration, but the 85% of the time it'll stay in kind of the all systems. And that's ideal. If you think about like a, a run or a hike or whatever it may be, where you may be out in the open in meadows and on top of ridgeline, all that stuff where you don't need like the higher GPS accuracy because it's perfectly fine with just regular GPS accuracy. And then you can kick it up when you get into the forest or against cliffs or rocks or that kind of stuff. Okay, and a quick note, if you're finding this video interesting useful, if you could just simply whack that like button down right about there, it really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Anyways, moving on to the next feature here, uh, they've added e-bike support, they've added the race day features. This came from the 955. This is basically where you put a race on your Garmin Connect calendar using the app or the site. You add in things like the race details, the location of the race, the exact time of the race, the course of the race, all that stuff. And it will dynamically generate training plans and training suggestions, primarily for the running side, but kind of like half ass for the cycling side right now, but mostly for the running side. Uh, and it's super cool. So if I go on my 955 right here, uh, you can see I've got this race set up. Uh, and if I tap into that, you can see it's in Paris at 9 a.m. If I scroll down, you can see that it's got my estimated time for completion and the estimated time over the last four weeks. You can see here's the predicted weather for that particular day. Uh, here's the course elevation profile. Here's the course profile itself. Uh, and then from there, it's gonna drive all your daily suggested workouts and even create like build and taper and peak phases in your race calendar and your race schedule on the watch itself. Next up, they've added a stocks widget glance. Uh, they've added a reference point app, but most interestingly, they've added a new Connect IQ widget glance folder item, which I know sounds confusing, but to begin, these are widget glances, right? All these things right here that you see, you get a bunch of them, you can add more to them, etc. But what they've done is they've added the ability to create a folder. So I've created a new folder called Outdoor. I tap into that and now I've got widget glances within that. Uh, and I put, you know, like temperature and solar intensity and weather and so on in that itself. You can get to this by going to the very, 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 very bottom, all the way down to edit. And then from there, you can go down again and then you'll see, boop, add, add create folder, and then you can choose what things you wanna stick in that folder. And then once you're done, you can choose whether to move those things to the folder or just simply copy them into the folder. I appreciate this, it's a cool little feature. Next, there's a cycling ability feature. This is a widget glance and it came from the Edge 1040 series just a couple weeks ago. Uh, this looks at your training and sees kind of what specialist you are. So you can see anaerobic, uh, aerobic capacity, endurance. And if I tap on this, uh, you can see my muscle endurance and power output should allow me to go all out on flat courses. Makes sense, given I live in the Netherlands. Uh, scrolling on down here, uh, you can see the different kind of details in each one of those uh, areas there. And the idea from this is that there's other features on the Edge 1040 that this pulls into when you look at courses and load up a course and whether or not that course will be kind of suited to you or maybe you should train a little bit more for that particular course. Next, there's golf virtual caddy support. 
I don't golf. I'm not sure if that's offered like on the putt putt course at the windmill, but if so, I am there. But what I am here for is the next feature, which is the ability to do categorization of activity profiles. So tap on the right hand side there and go into a sport mode like you normally would, but go down like you're going to add a brand new one. At the very bottom there, click add. And now you'll see these are all categorized by type, outdoor, running, cycling, swim, gym, etc. In the past, you just had a giant ass list. So if I just look over here on the 955, uh, here's the list. If I go down to add the very bottom, you just had this giant list like this that you had to scroll through and kind of find it. Uh, and I like the list, but I also really like that. Again, you can see I'm still scrolling here, folks, all the way down. I like this. This makes sense. Next, you got the biggie, which is training readiness. Uh, so if we go back here, you can add this as a widget. By default, it's not added. I would, that'd be my one suggestion here on the beta is make this a default widget being added to your loop. Uh, so you go in there, you'll add it yourself uh, to the very bottom like we did before. And then here you see training readiness. And right now it's gonna say I gotta wear my watch because I just updated the firmware a moment ago. But to show you what that looks like, here's on the Forerunner 955, which has plenty of training readiness data behind it. And you can see I've got moderate, it's 57 because I did a workout just a little bit ago. Uh, and this is a scale that training readiness is a little different in body battery because it's pulling in all the different components down the bottom there. My sleep, my recovery time since my last workout, my HRV status, my acute load, my sleep history, my stress history, all of these things are factored into whether or not you should train. This is different than like the general training status of productive, unproductive, et cetera, uh, because this is looking at a lot more factors in it versus that is looking at whether or not your training will make you faster, uh, if that makes sense there. So in this case, all these factors have to get kind of illuminated in order to see this feature. Uh, now some of them illuminate instantly, like sleep will illuminate automatically tonight if I sleep with this. Recovery time pulls in from existing pieces. Uh, HRV status, so this is an interesting one. This takes 19 days to show up in full. If I crack into it, I can see this little color bar there and balanced. That's the part that takes 19 days. However, you can sleep with it and immediately see your last night's HRV details uh, right away. So that's, that's immediate the first day you use it, first night you use it, the next morning. It's measuring your HRV throughout the entire night uh, and then produces a little pretty graph that you can look at. You can also see this data in the Garmin Connect mobile app as well. Again, if you want to really deep dive into this, I've got this in my 955 beginner's guide video. You can actually skip to the right this section on this. And I even go out midway through the video and do a hard interval workout. So you can see the training status piece, like plummet after the hard workout and then eventually recover again over the course of the next night and so on. So I'm gonna skip through a couple like bland ones that aren't super applicable on the sports side here. And then getting to the run power support with a compatible accessory. So this is the biggie that came from the 955, which is that you can now get semi native running power on the watches, meaning that you still have to have one of Garmin's accessories, the HRM Pro, the HRM Try, HRM Run, uh, with that thing or the RD Pod as well. One of those accessories has to be paired with the watch, but the running power now shows up natively in the watch. And in particular, things like running power zones and structured workouts, all that kind of stuff works just like it would on the cycling side, but native on the watch itself. As soon as you pair one of those accessories, that'll automatically start generating running power data behind the scenes, but you still will need to add the running power data screen, data fields uh, to your running profile. So just keep that in mind. Fun, last thing I wanna highlight on the list here is the new what's new page. So when you update your firmware for this first time, you've got now a page that shows you what's new. It's super clever. It's something we first actually saw on the Hammerhead Crew 2, I think about a month or so ago. Uh, and it's pretty cool. Basically just a really simple page to show, hey, here's all the new stuff that's added to your watch. Maybe you can go take advantage of it. Now there's one feature that's missing here that is on the 955 that is supposed to come over but hasn't quite made it yet, which is the new morning report. Uh, basically the way that shows up each morning shows your HRV status, your training readiness, uh, recovery, gives your suggested workouts of the day, weather, all this sort of stuff in one tidy little morning report. I love it. It's like the quickest, greatest little glance at just seeing how things are going in my training and kind of overall health life. I assume that simply didn't make the cut uh, for today's release because it is something that Garmin did promise is coming to the Phoenix 7 and Epic series. Okay, so there you go, a complete look at all these new features. Uh, I'll do more of a full comparison between the Phoenix 7 and the 955 once the dust settles on this beta over the next probably few weeks or so. Uh, that way it's kind of equal to figure out where things stand uh, once all those features and the promised features arrive. If you found this video interesting and useful, whack that like button at the bottom there. There's plenty more sports technology stuff, especially over the next few days leading the Tour de France and Eurobike and just random, you know, July announcements. With that, have a good one.